I was at the dump the other day and I come across this old barbecue, Woo! the old outdoor grill. And I thought to myself, I thought to myself, wonder if I can make this into a welding and plasma cutting table. I really need a plasma cutting table that's on wheels and it's also got like a water trough underneath it. First thing we need to do guys, strip the thing out as you can see. What we'll do guys is we'll also take the grill bit off it. Might keep that bit there. Some sort of lock here which is cast iron as well so we'll get rid of those guys. Hey guys, this is going to take way too long doing it with a spanner. I'll get the plasma cutter out. Yeah! Okay, right, guys, if we can get that off. Yeah! Well, these gas burner things here have little clips in the bottom of them, but they're all rusted in there. I can't get them out, so I'll just have to use my hammer. One, two, three, four, five. So what I'll do guys is I'll leave this bar in the bottom here because it'll strengthen up the, the whole body of my cutting table. And this here, see this here guys, you see this down here, that's all I can move it. So what we need to do now guys is take the top off, up that and scrap it all in. We also have a gas fitting on this side guys, so we'll have to disassemble that as well. More for the scrap bin guys. And we don't need that either. Yo! Pre-assembled the bits that I've just cut on my chop saw. Then we need a back, and you might notice that this is all second hand steel. I got the whole lot from the dump, including my uh, barbecue here. So I haven't spent any money at all making this thing. As you can see here guys, you can see it's got bloody old rivets. It used to be on a lamp post. What we need to do now guys is roughly put this into the centre. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to put it at about 400 because I've only got a sheet of metal of 4 mil steel that's 400 wide. So we'll do the slats this way and then I'll be able to use another piece to do the slats the other way. So we'll do about 400. 400. 365. 370. So we're 5 mil out of whack. So we'll just go about halfway in between. So the trouble with the second hand steel guys is this is bloody galvanised and it doesn't weld properly and it's really really fumy. You have to sort of wear a mask while you're welding it. Anyway guys, we'll go and weld this up properly so it doesn't fall to bits. Anyway guys, I've got the old frame welded up here. So what we've got to do now is cut some slats like this. I'm using four, four and a half mil steel so it's, it's really quite thick steel. So what we'll do is we'll plasma cut it up a few slats and then we'll weld it into the frame, see what it looks like. So guys, I managed to get all my slats cut, so we'll weld it up, see what it looks like. Yeah! Hey, you remember when I said to you keep the fat draining tray into this big ugly looking tray here? I'll show you why. I've got an old garden hose connector thing here, so we'll use that and we'll block up the hole and it'll be easy to unblock it when we want to drain the water out of it. Put one end in here like so. You can use anything, you can use a bottle cork, you can use anything, but this is just what I happen to have. And then the other end, we just tighten it up at the back like so. It's got a rubber grommet in it so it won't leak. And then when we want to drain the water out of it, we just undo it and the water will piss out and we can put some clean water in. So that's what it looks like on the other side, guys. So if we have a look at the back of our welding table, I mean our barbecue, 
It's got a rail here and it's got a rail here and it doesn't matter which barbecue you have, they're all much the same. So what I'm going to do is slide this fat tray, this drip tray back in, but the, with our little plug that we put in here. Just like so, yeah! So now what we want to do guys is see if this grate that I made, jeez it's heavy, will actually fit in the barbecue. <laughs> Look at that, what a fluke that is, yeah! So now what I want on the table, guys, is a vice. I know I'm only doing small projects in the shed, so I only need a small lightweight vice. It's not as if I'm going to be smashing the living shit out of it. I'll use the other bench if I want to do that. But sometimes I do a bit of soldering, and I do a little bit some pieces, and I might want to bend the screw or something, so I just need something here, rather than have to run to the other bench all the time. So now we'll see if my holes actually bloody line up. <laughs> I've done it before where I've plasma cutted holes, and none of them seem to line up. For some reason they all seem to change. Couldn't possibly be me, of course. There's one there that does bloody fit. So what we'll do guys is I want that about there somewhere. So I'll just screw it on there and that gives me a power board on the outside. Why use a drill when you've got a plasma cutter? Yeah! Oh, it's handy to have a uh, power board on the front of your workbench guys. You can plug all your different bits and pieces in. I've always got bloody extension cords running everywhere. I just trip over them all the time. So it's better to have it all in one place. There we go, guys, and I got that from the dump as well. Yeah! Don't know if you guys are anything like me, you've always got bits of junk like this lying around, the old three seal tape and, and plasma cutting tips, electrodes, contact tips for your old uh, MIG torch and all sorts of bits and pieces. And I always leave them lying around and I can't find the bloody things. Hey, do you remember this gas thing here, guys? I've got this old dish from dump, put all my shit in here and I don't lose it. Just a plastic bowl like that guys, stick it in here, look at that, yee Grandma! <laughs> so guys, all in all we've got everything we need, I've got my welder on this side, I've got my consumables in the little box underneath, I've got my power board here which I can turn the welder or my plasma cutter on, or my compressor, on off like so. Uh, the other side, like I say, I've got my plasma cutter, got the air hooked up. I've got a space here to hang my power tools that I use mostly when I'm welding, like the grinder and the drill. I've got my vise here that I can use to just bang some screws over or whatever I want to do. And we'll kick it in the gut shortly, guys. But let's see if this water table works first, eh? See if there's anything pissing out of it. See the water in here, guys? Got about three quarters of an inch of water, which is all I need for the sort of cutting that I do. See that? Perfect Mundo. So guys, let's see if it works, eh? Hee <laughs> hee! What do you reckon? <laughs> it works! <laughs> so I can almost hear you guys saying, well, that's all very well, Pete, if you want a plasma cup, but what if you want to weld up something? Well, guys, let me cup it up, take out this hot plate that I told you not to throw away before, and make sure you take a bit of the old uh, paint or grease or whatever is on there off, otherwise you won't get a proper contact. Safety first, you know me. And there we go, guys. Yeehaw, Grandma. So all in all, guys, not a bad DIY project. It took me a little while to do this one. You've got a place for your compression down the bottom there. You've got a power junction box over there. You've got your little MIG on one side. You've got your plasma cutter on the other. You got somewhere to hang your tools that you use most, somewhere to put your clubs, somewhere to store your torches, somewhere to put your welding rods, and best of all, your workshop doesn't catch fire because it's got water underneath it. Anyway guys, that's enough bullshit from Mesa for today. If you like the video, remember to do what you got to do, and we'll see you next time, eh? Pete's Tools.com